As anyone who has solved the differential equation knows, boundary conditions are important to, to the solution of the differential equation. Change the boundary conditions, you get a different solution, or maybe no solution at all. So if we're using conformal mappings to transform a known solution of Laplace's equation from one domain to another, we need to pay attention to the boundary conditions. The good news is that Dirichlet boundary conditions are preserved by conformal mappings. And the Neumann boundary condition that the normal derivative is 0 is preserved. But other Neumann boundary conditions are not. So here's the theorem. The theorem says if uh, f going from a domain in z to a domain in w is a conformal transformation, which is to say dz is a subset of c, and dw is a subset of c, f is analytic with f prime of z not equal to 0. Then it preserves Dirichlet boundary conditions. These are where h on the boundary of dw is equal to 0, or some other value. In fact, any value will do. If 0 is a constant, and it also preserves Neumann boundary conditions. And the way that this works is that you take the normal derivative of h. So usually we write it like this on dw. Or you might want to use a directional derivative. So the derivative in the n direction of h, n w, and this is equal to 0. So what does it mean by preserves? Well, if you watch my other video about transforming harmonic functions using conformal mappings, uh, you will know that if I take h and then f, this composition, do f and then h, then this is a statement, in this case, for the Dirichlet boundary conditions, then it means that capital H restricted to the boundary of dz is equal to H0. And here it means the same kind of thing. Capital H, its normal derivative on dz is equal to 0. So that's what it means. And of course, I could write this h out a little more explicitly. I could write it out making use of, this is h of u of x and y, v of x and y, where f is equal to u plus i v. OK, now how does this work? Well, the proof of this kind of statement is actually not very difficult at all, and really follows from conformality. So, A is just the fact that if H is equal to H naught, then 
capital H of X and Y, which is H of U of X and Y, comma V of X and Y. And this is for U V on the boundary of D W. Well, then this is on the boundary of DW when this is on the boundary of DZ. And that's equal to H naught. So that's absolutely easy. For the Neumann boundary conditions, imagine here this is my boundary of DW. W, DW is up here. This is the boundary of DW. Remember, we have a conformal mapping, and we're really interested in this normal derivative, which normal derivative means I have a tangent to the boundary. Here I have a normal derivative. When I have a conformal mapping, that relationship between the normal derivative and the tangent, the angle remains the same. So under a conformal mapping, So, I get the same kind of picture going on. All right, let me put it up here. I have the same kind of picture going on. This is the boundary of DZ. DZ is up here. And there's the tangent and the normal. And because the angles are preserved, this tangent gets taken to that tangent vector. This normal gets taken to that normal vector, and the angle is preserved. So that means the normal derivative and the tangent to the boundary, they are going to be the same kind of directions. So the only question is whether or not you're dealing with um, a, a derivative equal to 0 or something else. Certainly because conformal mappings do not preserve uh, lengths, the actual value of the derivative really might change a bit, but it's going to change in a linear way that preserves the zero. You can see this if you look at the way that the level curves go. If this is a level curve of a solution, they're perpendicular as well. I haven't drawn those perpendicular, but they're perpendicular to that normal derivative on the w on the z side because specifically they're preserved on the z on the w side. So these are level curves of little h. And you will notice they are perpendicular to this normal curve, at least nearby the boundary. That's what the normal derivative of little h being 0 means. And because angles are preserved again, it must be we can conclude that, in fact, these guys are perpendicular as well on the other side. So little h normal derivative on dz, w being 0 means normal vector is perpendicular to level curves of h. Thus, normal vector 
in boundary of DZ is perpendicular to level curves of capital H, i.e. normal derivative along the boundary of DZ is equal to zero. And that's the end of the proof. Big caveat is If this is not equal to zero, the, the Neumann boundary condition is not equal to zero, uh, then the statement is not actually true. You can come up with counterexamples fairly easily.